Hello, friends and followers. Well, here's a national company HRO 500 receiver, which I've had my eye on. This was on eBay. And why did I want this thing? This one is really rough. The gentleman that I got it from says it might have been in a flood or something. This came from Las Vegas. And actually, I picked it up from the gentleman. He simply uh, handed it off to me, car to car, after I paid for it. So that was nice. It didn't get shipped. Anyway, I've been cleaning up this thing a little bit. It, I've actually cleaned the front of it a bit, even though it doesn't look like it. It was a bit worse. I found that I can't really get this crud off of here very easily. Or this stuff off of here very easily. I was experimenting with pool acid and silver cleaner and such to see how I could do with that. This knob cleaned up pretty well. I still got to pull it off and really clean it, but it operates. It seems like all the controls now do operate. I've had to struggle with them and, and lubricate them, but I think it's all right. I think all the bulbs in this thing are burned out. I did apply some 12 volt power to it through the 12 volt connector and didn't get much out of it. I got about 100 milliamps of uh, power draw, so that means it's doing something. And the speaker in the back popped. So I think that means something is working. Um, really well-made receiver. This is probably my favorite receiver of all time, if nothing else, because of the clean aesthetics and the mechanics of it. So. Anyway, I flipped it over here to see what was going on underneath it, and surprisingly, this thing is very clean under here. I, I thought it was going to be a mess because of a flood, but it doesn't seem like it was flooded. It looks like somebody might have been in here repairing it here and there. This capacitor looks like it's from the future of 1965. This is a 1965 model, by the way. So, yeah, this is for the 12-volt uh, power supply from AC, 120 volts and 12 volts. This probably gets replaced. I've been running it on 12 volts off of a uh, small supply, so I'm not really going to try the 110 yet. But I love how this is made because it's using the World War II type technology on the boards with the point-to-point -point wiring. It's lovely. This this is very serviceable. It's simply a lovely, lovely receiver. There's no PCBs, none of that horse horse shit. So it's it's lovely. It's made like a battleship. There's a uh, legend that I guess a salesman at National Company, Walt Fuchs or F U C H S. I don't know. Was you know Max Fuchs, Walt Fuchs. I read this on a blog. He walks into a ham fest in, in uh, Wakefield, Massachusetts, and he had this radio tucked under his arm. And so he simply throws it across the table and it lands on the floor. And people were like, what, what, what? And here the lore is that he said, this thing's indestructible. <laughs> and maybe it is. The case is really, really nice too. The case that came with this thing is really a wreck. It's all rusty and... That made me fearful of even buying this radio at all. But when I finally got it out of the case and took a look in here, it doesn't look so bad. So what needs attention now immediately are the uh, the wafer switches. They're really corroded. So if you look at these, it's, it's a horror show how these look. They're all green with crud and dirt. And I got to clean those up first and see if I can get those cleaned up. They're all shabby. As long as I don't break any wires or break any contacts, I guess I'll be alright. So once that's done, maybe I'll try to uh, get this thing running. I did reseat some of the uh, transistors. Every transistor in here is socketed. You can see those are transistor sockets. And after reading the blogs, they say there's a bunch of 0.1 capacitors in here that go bad, so it's probably these. Those are not so bad to replace. So yeah, I'm looking forward to making this thing go. People were saying it doesn't have much of a front end on it and you know, yada, yada, yada. But 
just the pure aesthetics of owning this thing to me is, is, is what makes it all worthwhile. I love the big dial here. I've always envied these dials because they're from World War II era. And this seems to be the last radio with this dial from, from National. You can torque it that way, you can torque it this way, that's in good shape. Everything here kind of runs. I gotta pull the knobs off and probably gotta find some of these little inserts here or make them or something for these that are missing. Maybe replace them all because they're all kind of crummy. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna get this cleaned up, but I'll try. I tried cleaning up this a bit. I tried acid on here today, a little bit of acid. It might have worked a little bit, but I'm thinking I could probably get some emery cloth and rub these down. Just rub off all the crap, reshine them that way. So I got to pull the front panel to try and perfect this thing. But for now, I think I just want to get it running. I don't see any dial lights on it. I think those are all burned out. But I did get the um, I did get the synthesizer to uh, turn, so that was jammed up a bit. So yeah, let's see if you can see the synthesizer. So when you change the bands in this thing, it will change this window. And without the lights fired up, I guess you can't see much, but. Yeah, right there. So if I roll this thing down through, you see that little window in the middle there? Let's try and get some light on it. Yeah, so you try and marry up the synthesizer. So uh, unlike my Tentec Paragon, which is easy to operate, this thing is like, is, as one reviewer said, having a car with a clutch and a manual gear shift, whereas the Paragon is like having an automatic transmission. So you might ask why after owning a Paragon am I going back in time? I don't know. I just love the construction of this thing. I love the uh, controls. I love the styling. Anyway, so when you turn the uh, synthesizer tuning knob, that will make this little number change. See that number changing there? So that's how you run this thing for the band you want. And then you try and lock that synthesizer. So, so the light will go on when it's unlocked and you try and lock it. So that's what you do. Let's see, where's the unlock button? I guess you just twiddle with this until it locks and you get the band right. That's all you do. This light has to go out and then you're ready to go. So. That's where I'm at on this radio. I don't know if this light is operating or not yet. Nothing nothing lights up in this thing. And it draws 100 milliamps. So I guess the first thing I do is replace, replace some of the uh, dial lamps and make sure that light is uh, working. I want to hear some static out of it and I don't hear any static at all. So I do know this thing will mute if it's not locked. So probably what I should do is just rotate this until it has some hiss coming out of it, even if I don't replace the lights. Anyway, this is a great radio. I love how it's styled. I did try to clean it up a bit today. I took some Q-tips to it, trying to get all the major crud out of here. I really, to do it justice, I gotta pull the little knobs off and clean all them up and carefully clean up the face without ruining anything and get the face all pristine. This big knob should come off and get uh, cleaned up a little better. I gave it a quick cleaning, but as you can see, it's not too good. It does work though. It does, uh, it's number switching things, so that's what I want to see. It looks like that's metal, that's metal there. I, I'm wondering if I can clean this crud off of here. Hopefully. And it might be just taking some memory cloth to it and shaving all this off and then repainting these things. I don't know, but I want to get it perfect. I guess I'm looking ahead. I really should just try and get it working. So that's the uh, front of the HRO 500. There are many of these, of course, displayed on YouTube. This is a, this is a uh, 1965 model, and it's now the year 2024. So I'm not sure how many videos of this are around from the year 2024, but that's where we're at now. 
Here, so I could flip it over and show you the rest of it with one hand, maybe. Let's see how that works out. Anyway, yeah, I was about to put some detox into the switches and see if I can coax this thing back into doing something. Boy, can you believe how this is wired up, though, how, how neat it is. I guess this thing cost a good bit of money. People were saying this is like $10,000 in, in 2022 money or 2023 money. Let's see if I can flip it over without killing myself. I think it's about 30 pounds or 25 pounds. Okay, I flipped it. Is it gonna stay flipped? Yep. So there's the filthy monster. I think I'll nickname this thing the Blue Lagoon because the case is blue and it's a lagoon. So it's still filthy. I did try to clean up the inside a bit and it looks like it will clean. You can see where there's patches of no dirt where I cleaned it up a bit. I took acid to this lid a bit and it did clean up somewhat. So I gotta get these lids cleaned up. At any rate, I debated soaking this thing in water and just hosing it off. I don't, I don't think I'm going to go there. Uh, I'm going to probably have to Q-tip clean this thing and carefully just give it a work over. There's only about half an hour of cleaning right now. Anyway, I started pulling out these transistors. They're all seated. Just pull them out, not all the way, and just kind of rub them back and forth to get the contacts cleaned. Pretty much got all these transistors here done. You should probably pull the rest of these out. Um, some of these you can't get to very easily. I did clean up, or not clean up, I did oil some of the bushings in here for the synthesizer. Uh, it still has a nasty squeak to it. If I, oh no, it's not, yeah, there it is. It's got a nasty squeak. I guess it's way down in there, so I can't get it. I have to. I have to get the front panel off, probably. So when I get the knobs off, maybe I'll see if I can take the front panel off. These bulbs are hard to replace. You can't really get to the screws very easily. I guess there's a bulb in here too, somewhere for that thing. I don't see one though. Oh, there's a crystal. Looks like the main oscillator is there for the uh, calibration. Pretty cool. At any rate, this is a lovely receiver. I mean, you, people gripe it doesn't work that well, but I love how it's made. Labeled. Really nice. I did try to clean it up in here a bit. Okay, there's a light bulb there. I can probably replace that. These are probably 12 volt bulbs, I'm thinking. I don't have any 12 volt bulbs around. I did clean up the rotary thing. So yeah, when you change bands, this, this little turret here rotates. Typical national standard where you have these die cast gears and reminds me of the, H, the uh, 300 receiver and the 303, NC300, NC303 where there's gears and things. But when you rotate the band knob, it will change these windows so these windows are visible in the front display and when you change this it's showing you different windows for different columns and numbers so these columns will change depending on the mask you can see the mask is uh rotating and so the masks kind of go this way this way this way depending on the band and then when you tune the synthesizer there's a tune control right there. You'll see it'll move this whole rotary turret, turret, cylinder. That wasn't working at all before it couldn't rotate it. So now it's rotating, which is good. I just simply helped it along and put some oil on it. So luckily that doesn't need fixed too much. There's still some dirt in there I gotta get out, but yeah, you can get the dirt out just by uh, cranking back the band and the dirt will be right there. So there's that dirt right there, just swab it out. Anyway, now I wanna see if this thing will do something, see if I can make it do anything, hear something out of it. So 
that is where I'm at now on it. There isn't much information on these things. People show them running, but they don't even show them running a whole lot. They just say, yeah, here's WWV and that's nice. So anyway, yeah, my goal is to get this thing cleaned up, get it fairly pristine, get it working, get it aligned. One guy said he put 100 hours in one of these. This one came out better than I thought. I, I thought this thing was going to be a basket case. It, it still may be, but at least the controls operate and it, and it moves. Everything pretty much works and everything's present. So that gives me a good head start. All right. So hope you enjoyed my little tour of the HRO 500 receiver circa 1965. These things, these things, these things I think were made from 65 until sometime in the 70s, maybe 75 or 8 or something. I don't know. It would have been nice if I ran across one of those, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have this one actually. It's, it's in a fixable condition. So yeah, big nasty capacitor. All this stuff's low voltage though, which what's that one say? 25 volts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can replace these things with tiny little capacitors. I could tear that thing out. So I think to keep it aesthetic, so I would tear that thing out and uh, I guess take it apart, put some capacitors inside of it and rebuild it. I don't want to have a butchered looking unit. So anyway, that's what I'm up to. There's so many things to tune this thing. There's so many capacitors. There's so many cans. This is like a real, I don't know, a man's receiver. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. It's a complex receiver. The synthesizer is uh, an old style. I guess they call it an analog synthesizer. So yeah, I should be pulling out some of these and just reseeding them, all the crystals. But I want to see if it'll throw out some static now that I can move the uh, synthesizer. So yeah, I've watched people run these on YouTube and all they seem to do is, is tune the synthesizer and it fires up, so pre-select, I guess this matters too. And they have this all arranged. Anyway, yeah, and that could be why it didn't work. I just didn't uh, didn't have this thing set right. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna put power on to it, and if I get it working, I'll take a video of that and uh, show you what's happening, okay? Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.